Every day it's opposite day, and there's always endless nonsense to address. This is one I have not seen anyone address, though, and every time I consider making a video about it, something else pops up to distract me. Would it surprise you to learn that most of the saturated fat in the human body today is created from eating carbohydrate? Would it also surprise you to learn that it enters the body in a way that causes infinitely more damage than taking saturated animal fat into a fat cell? I'll not only tell you how both simple carbs and the mythical complex good carbs are turned into saturated fat, and what this saturated fat is, but I'll also tell you why. Fat is comprised of fatty acids that range from having two carbon atoms in the case of vinegar or up to 18 carbon atoms in the case of stearic acid. Fatty acids are typically lumped into categories such as being omega-3, omega-9, short-chain fatty acids, PUFAs, or MUFAs. The truth is that every fatty acid is completely different chemically, and they have very different properties from other fats, such as the short-chain fatty acids. Vinegar is different than all of the other short-chain fatty acids, though none of those can be stored as fat in the body. Much of this confusion, I believe, is actually intentional, and it's there for the purposes of shenanigans. While EPA and DHA are omega-3 fatty acids critical for brain function and cell membrane health, alpha-linoleic acid is promoted as being interchangeable with these guys, even though ALA only converts DHA in small amounts and cannot convert to EPA at all, and EPA is the one that's more important in many ways. In reality, it requires animal fat to meet your dietary needs for EPA and DHA, especially wild-caught fatty fish like herring. Salmon is typically farmed, and the lean portions served in restaurants have little fat in them anyway. So this is basically a poor choice, and this is one of the worst recommendations that you get in all the mainstream channels that doesn't really make any sense when you look at it closely. EPA and DHA are also PUFAs, or polyunsaturated fats, but unlike the harmful PUFA linoleic acid, they do not harm the mitochondria in the body, even though many people have said this, including Ray Pete. In fact, they tend to be very anti-inflammatory and protective of mitochondria. In any case, the body mostly reserves these fatty acids for use in structural components like the myelin sheath that protects your neurons and allows them to quickly signal back and forth to each other and for cell membranes to function properly. So it is with saturated fats. Lately, everyone is raving about the so-called C15 fatty acid. This is called pentadecilic acid but no one seems to use its name in these highly scientific videos for some reason. I will make a video on this at some point because people periodically ask me about it, but in the meantime, my point is that pentadecilic acid has much different properties than stearic acid, and also much different properties than palmitic acid or C16. When people drone on and on about saturated fats, most of them have no clue that these are the three main ones in the body. These three fatty acids are what doctors are warning you against. In spite of the fact that all the science, including the data of Ansel Keys himself, shows the contrary. All those that deny that to my foes. All realm denies it from dawn to the wall. Old men deny it with their death rattle and unborn children deny it in their mother's wombs. I've talked about stearic acid in the past, and the cliff notes is that processing it creates extra succinate within the mitochondria, which leads to improved mitochondrial function and improved mitochondrial density. This is a very good thing. In fact, it's the very healthiest fuel you could possibly put in your body, aside from vinegar. 
Since I plan to make a video on it, I won't spoil the surprise with pentadecilic acid, but suffice to say there are endless purported health benefits for the C15 fatty acid. It's definitely not a mysterious toxin from another world that should inspire existential dread in all of humanity. Yet there are some bad associations with saturated fat. You should note though that dairy and beef are full of C18 or stearic acid and they're also some of the biggest sources of C15. So those are the ones that are not problematic. So what's left then? Well the main saturated fatty acid left is palmitic acid or C16 which comes from plants. When you burn fat in the mitochondria, it splits off two carbon chunks of fat at a time, ultimately splitting each molecule into vinegar, which is then burned to create ATP and water. This also creates some byproducts, but much fewer than when burning carbs. When you burn stearic acid in this manner, it releases extra succinate, which produces extra energy for the cleanup of cellular metabolism. However, this doesn't happen with carbs which also generate additional byproducts. It also doesn't happen with palmitic acid or C16 as it's sometimes called. That's why palmitic acid is the least healthy saturated fat you can consume. Just because it has the magic number 16 which is divisible by 8 and it's really in that size of chunk that your body is most efficient at breaking this stuff up. So it doesn't have this so-called problems of being inefficient at breaking it up, which actually causes the mitochondria to increase their strength. It's still healthier than burning carbs though. And guess what? This is the most common saturated fat in plants. So while corrupt organizations like the American Medical Association tell us to avoid red meat due to saturated fat, they push us not only into the much worse linoleic acid and carbohydrates, not to mention processed foods full of poison, which is the main thing people are really going to eat instead of meat, but also the worst saturated fat of all, palmitic acid. Keep in mind these organizations all have industry ties, and recently they have even made moves to ban the sale of vitamin B12 and glutathione shots in several states and more are very likely to follow. And among the people who use these are firefighters who desperately need them after facing severe smoke inhalation because they help a great deal with this problem. Fire crews on those front lines tonight are breathing in fumes that can cause health problems, including cancer. And on Thursday, the California Board of Pharmacy will vote on whether or not to restrict access to B12 shots and glutathione. There's quite a few bad associations with palmitic acid and health conditions, and there really is no doubt it's the worst one, both mechanistically and observationally. That's not the worst of the situation, though. Not only have we been steered away from healthy saturated fats and animal products to less healthy fats and plants, but when we consume carbohydrates, we actually make new ones in the liver. When we eat animal fats and insulin is at normal levels, it's a very healthy process. The fats are taken directly into the bloodstream and the to a fat cell, or at least some of them are. The truth is that your body only takes what it wants into itself, and this is dictated by your insulin level and your gut microbiome. That is why an unhealthy microbiome, which is generally caused by processed foods and carbs, can actually cause us to gain 25% more weight when eating the same calories. When you consume carbohydrates, on the other hand, there's really nothing healthy about this process. In small amounts, it makes little difference, and you don't have to eat a keto diet. Our ancestors did eat other stuff. They just didn't eat nearly as much of it as we do, and they always ate it with plenty of meat and especially animal fat, except maybe once in a blue moon when they found a berry bush or something like that. And the more fat that you have with your meal, the less insulin is going to spike. So in spite of what some people say, if you have carbs, you should always take them with animal fat. You should never be just taking carbs and there's no nutrition in food like that anyway. And when you do eat carbs, it also makes triglycerides in the liver, 
And triglycerides are these three fatty acids attached to a glycerol backbone. This is how the fats you eat are stored in fat cells. But most of the fat people have today comes from triglycerides made out of excess carbs. By now you can probably guess which saturated fat these are made of. Palmitic acid. Only a few grams of glucose can be inside of your bloodstream at the same time. And anything else has to be gotten rid of right away or you'll simply drop dead. Small amounts can be absorbed by your liver's glycogen. But the more carbs you eat, the more is turned into triglycerides. Worse, when glycogen is full, your liver also starts to store fat directly inside the liver cells, which is very damaging to your liver. We keep our triglycerides at 60 milligrams per deciliter or less, and that's so important. Why? Well, keeping it at that level is associated with magnificent metabolic and cardiovascular health. And there's a number of reasons for that. Triglycerides are also the currency for energy exchange. If you have too much visceral fat, that those fat cells uh, emit triglycerides that go back to the liver, and the liver then deals with that and has consequences, including fatty liver. So having a triglyceride level of 60 milligrams per deciliter or less is a very, very powerful uh, uh, thing to achieve. It gets worse though. These fatty acids are turned into triglycerides that roam around in the body. A small amount of these guys is fine, but high blood triglycerides are universally recognized as bad news. People always ask me about blood markers, and most of them are largely useless because these are disease markers, so optimizing them makes no sense. They are context sensitive and more or less do not equal actual health. They're just a statistical anomaly that may or may not be indicative of something. For blood pressure, ALT, liver levels, and triglycerides, these levels really do directly reflect health. You do not want to have blood pressure excessively high, and you do want to keep your ALT and triglycerides as low as possible. Triglycerides are strongly associated with cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and essentially everything that's bad. They also play a big role in insulin resistance. When you hear about visceral fat and liver fat, this is what causes it, or at least it's part of the mechanism. You could say that eating carbs is what really causes it. This is also what causes diglycerides within fatty muscle cells that lead to insulin resistance. The triglycerides create an osmotic pressure wave, and this leads to forcing triglycerides into cells in excessive numbers and this causes serious issues. Due to their size, the saturated fats, including palmitic acid, can't enter the cell this way unless they're invited in by the cell as it were. But there are also other fatty acids like linoleic acid that are small enough to be pushed right through the cell membrane, especially if it is a defective cell membrane made with plant cholesterol. The higher insulin goes and the higher your blood triglycerides go, the more likely your cells are to take in excessive amounts of triglycerides. And when there's too many, the process of fat burning will flame out. It requires a small amount of glucose to split up triglycerides. And when you're fasting, this is taken from the glycerol backbone of the cell. But if the cell is overstuffed and insulin insensitive, it can wind up cleaving the triglycerides in completely because it gets tangled up with the other triglycerides and they'll clog up the cell and there's no way for it to either break them up or to take in more glucose to restart the process. Fasting or apoptosis is probably the only choice then. Otherwise it will wind up a senescent cell causing chronic inflammation in the body and it will go slowly down the road to cancer. When people talk about visceral fat, this is what they're really talking about. It's from triglycerides. The more carbs you eat, the more triglycerides you will make, and the more issues with visceral fat and liver fat that you're going to have. And liver fat is the worst fat of all because that's the one that makes you metabolically unwell and makes you shoot out blood sugar all day long into your body and that shoots your insulin levels up even higher. All the problems that are blamed on saturated fat from meat actually come from excessive carb intake. 
While saturated fat from animal products is blamed for heart disease and many other ailments, the greatest source of saturated fat in the human body today is actually palmitic acid created in the liver due to excessive carb consumption. This is released as triglycerides in the body, which directly contributes to insulin resistance within cells and to visceral fat. Triglycerides are universally recognized as one of the worst markers of poor health, and these saturated fats are associated with everything from cancer and heart disease to mental illness. We are told to avoid red meat on the pretext that the saturated fat in meat is bad for us, but in reality, animal products have very healthy fats and they're easy for the body to process, whereas plants have very unhealthy fats and carbohydrates are even worse than the fats themselves, though the processing of the seed oils is also a big, big problem. Unfortunately, when it comes to health issues, you have to constantly double check every bit of info you think you've learned. How did you know that? You win. Of course, you forgot to ask one question. You forgot to ask if I'm a liar. I'm afraid I am.